Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 304. Please turn to it. Page number 304, and today is our lesson number 71. Yesterday we finished doing practice problem, practice problem, practice exam number one. Today we'll do the math section from practice test number two. Let's take a look at the very first question there. The very first problem is asking us to divide. We divide 4 fifth by 8 over 15. Now, as we already learned it, all of these concepts that we're going to encounter in these exams, in the first exam that we already did, in the, in the exam that we're doing right now, all of the concepts that we, that we are encountering are all the concepts that we already covered on day 1 through 60 when we did the practice questions on page 50 to 110. And during, on those pages, and during that time, we learned that when we have one fraction and we're being asked to divide that one fraction by another fraction, what we do is, we take the first fraction and we multiply it by the reciprocal of the other fraction. So, 8 over 15 becomes 15 over 8. Now we just have to reduce it if we can. We see a 15 here, we see a 5 here, let's divide top and bottom by 5. If we divide top and bottom by 5, 15 is going to become 3 and the 5 is just becomes 1. We see a 4 here, we see an 8 here, let's divide top and bottom by 1. So 4 becomes 1 and 8 is going to become 2. That's it. This is just 1 over 1 which is just 1 and 3 over 2 is just 3 over 2. 3 over 2 which can be written as 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2. And of course 2 over 2 is 1. So it's 1, it's 1 and a half. That's our final answer, 1 and a half. Now on the other hand, if they had expressed answer choices like this as improper fraction, then you would have stopped there. But they do not express that as 3 over 2. The only answer choice that you have there is 2 over 3, which is which is a wrong answer obviously. The correct answer is 3 over 2, which translates actually to 1 and, one and a half. 1 and 1 half. And that's answer choice C. That's answer choice C. Let's take a look at number 2. Question number two, we are told that we have a scale that we are using here to build a model of a car, model of an actual car, and the scale is 1 to 25. In other words, if it appears as 1 inch in the scale version, in the real version it is 25 inches. The scale is 1 to 25. We are told that the actual car measures 7 inches. How, how much is the actual length of the car? The model car, not the actual car rather, this is the uh, model car. We are told that the model car measures 7 inches. What is the length of the actual car? Well, the actual length, the actual length is going to be, we know 1 inch, we know 1 inch equals 25 inches. And since the model is 7 inches long, therefore 7 inches is going to be 7 times as much. And how much is 25 times 7? I don't know how much 25 times 7 is. I know 25 times 4 is 100. That I do know. 100 is made up of 4 25s. And 200 is made up of 8 25s. Therefore, 725 must be 125 less than 200, which is 175. 175 inches is the answer. In other, in other words, a model car that measures only 7 inches, in reality, the same car, the real version, the full-blown version, is actually 175 inches long. Let's go to let's let's go on to number three, problem number three. In problem number three, we are dealing with the percentage change concept. We are told that we have a population which decreases, but we have a population population that decreases from 404 to 288. That's the important part. We must know that where we are starting from and where we are ending. That's the important part. The starting point and the ending part is the key point here when we are doing the percentage change. Do you understand? And the question simply is, 
question simply is what's the what's the percentage decrease? What is the percentage decrease? And we know that the percentage change that we are looking for is equal to the change over the old number times 100 times 100 and we learned this thing on day number 14 if you have not watched day 14 make sure you watch that video that's where we learned the concept that's where we covered the concept of percentage change you have to know this formula do you understand and how do we define change change is defined as the new number change is defined as where can we put it here the change is defined as new number minus the old number that's how we define change and how much, are, how much is our new number? Well, our new number, we, we, we go from 404 to 208. 208 is our new number. Two num two, new number and 404 is the old number. The old number that I, that I keep calling as an old number, sometimes we refer to the starting point as the initial quantity. Sometimes we call it the old number. Sometimes some people refer to it as the original number. It doesn't matter. That's the quantity that we started our, our journey with. We started from 404 and we, down, we are down to 288. The fact that it's going down, that, that tells us that it's a percentage decrease. And in our calculation, we'll see a negative sign. The negative sign will indicate that it's a, it's a drop. Of, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a drop. The negative sign will tell us it's a drop. So we have to figure out, what we have, really we have to figure out is new minus the old. The new is 288. So actually what we have to do is 288 minus 404. But if you leave it like this, as you can see, when you try to subtract a large number from a, from a smaller number, it gets to be annoying. So if somebody asks you how much is 85 minus 100, if somebody asks you how much is 85 minus 100, that's kind of cumbersome. That's kind of annoying to do. So what you do is, they are asking you how much is 85 minus 100. What you do is just the opposite. Do, do the opposite. Do 100 minus 85. And once you get your answer, you know that 85 is the positive quantity, 100 is a negative quantity, so it takes a sign of a negative one. Why, why 85 is a positive quantity? Because as, as you can see right here, you see this is the right here. What it, I'm going to raise the equal sign so you can see it. 288, because it did not have any sign in front of it, that tells us it's a positive quantity. So the change here is 288 minus 404. Minus goes with the 404. So since bigger number, Whichever number is the bigger number, the, the sign of that number is the, is, the, is the sign that you stick with the final answer. So here, what it is, is 85 minus 100, which is 15. 100 minus 85 is 15, and then 100 has a minus sign in front of it, so it takes a sign of the bigger number. Same exact thing we're going to do here. Instead of trying to figure out what is 288 minus 404, let's do 404 minus 288. And once we have the answer, we'll just stick a negative sign. So 14 minus 8 is 14 minus 8 is 6. Now as soon as as soon as you borrow as soon as you borrow one from this guy here, this is a zero. If you borrow one from it, the only way it can lend you one is because it is when the only way the zero can lend you one is when zero goes to this guy and borrows one from this guy. So this guy gives one to zero and therefore four becomes three. And when as soon as you borrow one from one to give it to four. 0 is going to become 9. Make sure you make those changes immediately, right away. Don't leave it until the end because there is a good chance you might forget it. So now, this is a 9. 9 minus 8 is 1. And 3 minus 2 is 1. So the change is 116. Now we have to stick a negative sign in front of it. That's all. So now we're going to use this formula. Let's put it on the top here so we can do it. So here is our formula here. That tells us that the percentage change is equal to the change which is negative 116 over the old number. Old number is the number that we started out with and that's this number right here, 404 times 100. Let's see what we can do next. I need the room obviously, so I need to raise this thing. Let's see what we can do next. Well, you see, there is a 16 here. Here's, here's the rule. A number, a number is divisible by 4 if the last two digits last two digits are divisible by 4 that's, that's, that's how you tell if a number is divisible by 4 
for example, for example, is 16 divisible by 4? Of course 16 is divisible by 4. How about 716? Well, 716, the 700 plays no role. 700 absolutely plays no role. Why? Because we know 100 is divisible by 4. Can you divide 100 by 4? Of course you can divide 100 by 4. Well, if you can divide 100 by 4, then obviously we can divide 200 by 4 evenly. And we can divide 300 by 4 evenly. Any multiple of 100, any multiple of 100 is divisible by 4. So this, this, this thing is this thing is 700, 700 plus 16. 700 is divisible by 4. You don't want to worry about this digit. We just have to concentrate the last two digits. Similarly, similarly, 3716 is also divisible by, by 4. Because why? Because we know 1000 is divisible by 4. Well, if 1000 is divisible by 4, then any multiple of 1000 should also be multi divisible by 4. If 1000 is divisible by 4, then so is 3000. And so on and so forth. So the only, only two digits that play a role the only two digits that play a role in determining whether or not a number is divisible by 4 are the last two digits. And here I see 16. 16 tells us that that number is divisible by 4. And here we see 0, 4, which tells us that this number is divisible by 4. We're going to divide top and bottom by 4. Okay? Watch what happens. We're going to divide top and bottom by 4. I shouldn't have written away up here. Now I have to do it here. I left no room. Let's bring it down a little bit. Percentage change is equal to negative 116 over 404 times 100. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. We can divide top and bottom by 4. Okay, let's, let's start our thing. How many 4s in a 1? 1 has no 4s. That one goes and joins the F. Joins this one, becomes 11. How many 4s in 11? 11 has two 4s. Two 4s are 8. Listen very carefully. Two 4s are 8. Learn how to divide numbers without a calculator and without doing the long hand. So we have used up 8 out of 11. What happens to the 3? The remaining 3. The remaining 3 goes and joins the 6 and becomes 36. How many 4's in a 36? 36 has 9 4's. 9 4's are 36. You see it divides evenly. In other words, if you were to multiply 29 by 4, you will get 116. Since we divide the top by 4, we have to divide the bottom by 4, which is very simple. How many 4's in a 4? 4 has 1 4. How many 4's in a 0? Zero? 0 has no 4. How many 4's in a 4? Four? 4 has 1 4. Voila. Are you still with me in this story? Very good job. Now what we're going to do from this point on is that's where, that's where the, the art comes into it and the science we stop there for a second because if you if you are if you sit there and if you hell bent on doing the precise calculation like a good school girl or good school boy you will never get anywhere it will take too much time it will take inordinate amount of time do you understand so here's what we're going to do we're going to take some liberties this is 100 this is 101 i'm going to pretend that 101 is approximately same as 100 which is okay we are approximating so if this had been 100 or this had been 101 we could have crossed out these two that's it. So now the percentage change is not exactly 29 because this is not 100 and nor is that. That one is not 101. So the percentage change is not exactly 29 but we can say that the percentage change, percentage change is approximately 29. Now see the way I wrote it here percentage change is approximately 29 percent. That's redundant. Once we put a percentage change sign here I have to get rid of the sign there because otherwise it, it becomes redundant. So that's your percentage change is approximately 29. It's not exactly 29 because you see this is 101. We crossed out 101 with 100. So it's about 29%. Now we're going to look at the answer choice and just pick one answer choice that comes closest to 29% and that's what it is. You're not going to have more than one answer choice close to 29%. If you look at the answer choices, we have 2.9% obviously. 2.9% is for those people who are not paying attention, it's, it's 29%, it's not 2.9%. Then we have 3.5%, obviously it's not 35 and then we have 71%, it's not 71%. The answer is C. The answer is C, which they tell us is 28, 28.7%. Well, 28.7% is approximately the same as 29%. Very good, we're done. Let's move on then. Problem number four. Problem number four. I'll give you a second to take it down. In problem number four, they're simply asking us how many how many inches 
in two and a half yard. How many inches in two and a half yard? Well, that's quite straightforward. Particularly if you're an American, you know how many inches there are in a yard. I might not know it because uh, we are used to metric system, but you know it. One yard, one yard is made up of one yard is made up of three feet, and we know that each foot is made up of twelve inches. So it's three times twelve inches. One yard is made up of three times twelve inches, thirty-six inches. We're looking for two and a half yards. So it's just two and a half times 36. Let's do it here on the bottom. I need the room so we have to erase it. One more time, remember, as long as the last two digits are divisible by 4, the number itself is divisible by 4. So if somebody gives you a number like this, uh, I'm just going to write it out for 7,425,500 and 524. Uh, is this number divisible by 4? 7,425,500 424, the answer is yes, this number is divisible by 4 because the last two digits happens to be 24 and you can divide 24 by 4. If you can divide 24 by 4, then you don't have to worry about 400. 400 is divisible by 4, 5,000 is divisible by 4, 20,000 is divisible by 4, 400,000 is divisible by 4, and 7 million is divisible by 4 because 1 million is divisible by 4. If 1 million is divisible by 4, then so is 7 million. You don't have to worry about any of these digits except the last two digits. So now here we have to multiply two and a half by 36. Let's do it, shall we? Let's do it this. I should have written it the other way around. It would have been easier for you to see. We have to divide 30, we have to multiply 36 by two and a half. It really doesn't matter. I just I just erased it and wrote it this way uh, just to make it easier for you to see. So let's here. So now we're gonna do it. We're gonna learn how to multiply 36 by two and a half without a calculator and uh, in an efficient manner. 36 times 2, how much is 36 times 2? 36 times 2, how the hell do I know? I know 35 times 2, that I do know. 35 times 2 is 70. If you, if you add 35 and 35, that's 70. Therefore, 36 times 2 should be 72. So that's 72. Plus, now we have to do the half. Plus, 36 halves. How much are 36 half? 36 halves. How much are they? Well, let's find out, shall we? Divide how many how many twos in a three? Three has one two. The remaining one goes and joins the six and becomes sixteen. How many twos in a sixteen? Sixteen has eight twos. Voila. In other words, if you have thirty-six halves, what you have is eighteen holes. So there is your answer: seventy to two, seventy-two plus eighteen. Eighteen plus seventy-two. That gives us zero. Carry one and ninety. Our answer is ninety inches. Turns out that two and a half yard has exactly 90 inches. Let's move on to the last one on the page, number five. Number five. Actually, I'm going to do the number number five. I'm going to squeeze it here. They're asking us for a tool to measure thickness of a penny. That's what they're looking for in number five. And the reason I'm squeezing in the side here is because you will see in a second, because I don't know the answer. I don't know the answer. There are, there are some stuff here that I do not know. I don't even know how to pronounce the last one. So I don't want to make a fool of myself by pronouncing it. I'm not sure if it's pipette or pipette. And I don't know what it is. And caliper. You could measure the thickness of the penny by the ruler, but it's not going to be very accurate. Only thing that I know is not the answer, I know it's not the scale, because the scale is going to give you, give you the weight, it's not going to give you the thickness. But uh, among the remaining three, I don't know what the answer is. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Yes, I know, you're welcome for, for the help. Uh, I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.